Hmm. I learned something very, very important last week. Charge your fucking microphone before your film. So, um, this is actually now the second take that I have to do the review of the Natasha Denona Golden Palette. Um, first of all, I have now created four looks with a palette. So y'all lucky guys on Instagram, you see all four looks in a combined post today. And I will add the looks, uh, the photos just in a second here in the video. But you see already this basically is look three and four for this video. These two I will create here. So you do not have my typical, you know, tutorial one, tutorial two. You just have them um, in one big tutorial because actually I do not have the time to refilm it in that manner as usual so I need to make some cuts since I just um I said it already yesterday in the you don't need that shit video that um I realized when I filmed I don't know like about six or seven hours of content that my um battery of my little microphone was empty and I just realized it because for one video I had to put on glasses and then I started talking and I didn't see the little green bars like moving that just indicate that there is sound coming in so yeah that was fun um but i didn't want to skip the video or do it much later so i just had to redo certain things um i know i know in my dupe that video that i did two weeks ago where i tried to dupe the color story of this palette i said i will not be buying this because the color story does not speak to me then the day came and this uh, came out and <laughs> in Friday's um, video, you, um, you you were able to place bets if I get this or not. And a lot of you were right. Yes, I got the palette. Um, I got the palette even while I filmed that video <laughs> because then it popped up on the Sephora app here in Germany. But technically, Technically, this is not bought with my money. This is bought from you. So thank you for the generous gift. And if you're now sitting there and be like, huh, what, what is going on? This is purchased from my very first paycheck that I got from YouTube. So this is 100% covered with the ad revenue that I made on YouTube in the month of May. May? No, March and April. I just wanted to take this opportunity and say thank you. Thank you for making it possible that I'm able to buy makeup with money that I earned through making content. These, as I told you already, are looks three and four. And here you have look one and look two. Since all the footage that I used for these two tutorials were unusable because of the missing sound, I just thought, okay, Thank God I have the photos so I can show you here in the video. Let's now talk at first about swatches. And since I'm now too lazy to put on a swatch sticker or so, we're doing like good old life swatches here. So we start off with Milko, the shade that does not really show up, just as in my dupe swatches. Then we have Nubia, a kind of thin, um, warmish golden shade. Then we have Pana, this is more so yellowish warm and Milko and Pana are in the cream to powder formulation that I hate. Next up we have Aria, a very, very pretty tra tra transition color. What the fuck? Next up we have Fizzy. This is a warm golden in that thin formulation that was introduced to us with the Natasha Denona. Was it already in the Retro Glam? I'm not too sure, but definitely in the I Need a Nude one. Then we have Varis, a dark, dark brown bronze color. Aura, it, I don't know if you can tell, this is like translucent white with a light golden shift. And Teak. Then we have Kava. It feels very, very gritty, but goes on super duper thin. Sandstone, a super warm, transition color or blending shade in general. Aurum or Aurum, this is a very, very nice, little bit old gold. And the darkest matte in here is the shade Lock. And the last three shades are Oro, 
a very very intense true yellow gold flash again a light transition color and alchemist that is surprisingly warm and bronzy. So here you have all the swatches of the Natasha Denona Golden Palette. Now let's compare it to the swatches that I did in my video two weeks ago. Honestly, with a lot of the shades, I think I did a good match, but my color story in general was not as cohesive as the actual golden is. I don't think that I'm telling you new news when I tell you that this quality is just the normal plain Natasha Denona quality. I just wish that we had more of these thin shimmers in there compared to the more thick shimmers. And I also think that, just look at the swatches, a lot of these are very redundant in my opinion, especially when it comes to the mattes. I think a little bit more depth, a little bit more variation wouldn't have hurt anybody. And if you want to purchase the palette before these tutorials, you can of course do that and make sure you use a discount code. If you want to support me, I'd be more than happy. So if you want to buy this from the Natasha Denona website, I do have an affiliate link in the info box down below. And you can also use just in general my code Ella Kinkley to save 15% of everything on the website. But now let's head over to the Tutorial. Okay, for eye look number one, I'm going into the shade Aria and I apply this in the transition area. Next up, I tap into Teak and I place this directly into the crease. I went back into Aria and now I just buff it out a bit better. On a small pencil brush, I tap into Lock and that one I apply here on the outer part, bring it out a bit and of course into the crease. I applied my glitter glue and now I go into the shade Aurum or Aurum, I have no clue. And that one goes on the whole lid. I went back into lock and I basically just reapplied the same area as I did before just to deepen it up and with no additional product on the shade, uh, on the brush that I used the shade Teak with. I go through the crease again. For look number two, I'm going into the shade Flash and I'm starting with this also as my transition shade. On a pencil brush now, I tap into Lock and I pat this here on the inner parts and on the outer part, leaving the center bare. With a small blending brush but no additional product, I now go through the crease and I buff out the lock shade and kind of connect it here, but I don't want to add anything yet. Or do I? You know what? I tap into sandstone with that brush and I use this in the crease to connect both sides here. I applied my glitter glue in the center and I now go into the shade Alchemist. I tap this in the center. I also tap it out here on top of the dark edges, the tad bit above the crease. So for both lower lash lines, I tap into lock again. And for the first look, I apply lock just here on that outer third. But for the second look, I just mimic the halo effect and apply this on the inner and outer third. I now tap into teak. And for look number one, I buff this on the rest of the lower lash line and then buff it outwards too. And for the second look, I also use Teak to buff it out, but I'm still leaving the inner part bare. I take now Alchemist and on the second look, I apply Alchemist here on the lower lash line, also in the center. And now my favorite part, as always, the inner corners. For one look, or look number one, I take the shade Aura and I apply this here on the inner part. Aura needs a bit of building, in my opinion, to have its moment on your eye. It's more so very soft shimmer gold. And for the second look, I go into the shade Fizzy and apply this here on the inner corner too. So these are now both the finished looks. For the brow bone highlight, I didn't pick any shade of the Natasha Denona Golden palette. I actually used my face highlighter that I um, uh, chose. What, what was I'm going to say? I have no clue. And it's the shade Supernatural um, Strobe Powder, no, Supernatural Strobe Light in the Strobe Powder formulation from Hourglass. 
I have no fucking clue if this powder is in their permanent collection, but I recently have been <laughs> digging back into this one here. This is the Ambient Lighting Edit Universe palette, and I'm pretty sure that this is, I don't know, 2021 or 2020, something around that time. I haven't applied something on the lips yet because I think with this golden palette, you know, the outside, super golden, I do have a lipstick that matches this vibe, so say hello to my little wee wee, and how can I pair a bronze shimmery lipstick color if not with this eye looks. I do line my lips with Elisa Aldrich um, Shape Sculpt and Shade Pencil in 0N. And then I apply this one. The Golden Wee Wee from Isamaya Beauty comes with the shade uh, Chalice, but if you didn't know, you can pull them out and then just place another one of her shades inside. Honestly, this metallic finish gives me kind of end of 90s, starting 2000 vibes, and I'm not mad about this. This is absolutely superb. So how do I feel about this palette now after four looks in total? I still have the same opinion as in the original video that of course you didn't see, but I remember what I said. I don't think that I myself am really the targeted audience for this because, you know, my usual makeup style is much more bold, much more intense, much more out there, kind of gothic -y. But still, I think that I was able to create with this palette four very, very pretty looks. I mean, when we look at this one, for you look number one, for me actually now look number three, this is such a soft gold look without being too overpowering. And then compared to this more halo eye that is also not too overpowering, absolutely stunning, beautiful eye looks. The other two that I created, also beautiful. <laughs> but I really think you have to ask yourself, are you the targeted audience for this? Is this a palette that will make a good addition to your collection? To me, the addition that this makes to my collection is plain out of collector's purposes. I love the Natasha Denona quality, and with the golden palette, honestly, there is nothing I can complain about. Maybe, maybe just the fact that Milko and Pana are again the, these cream to powder shades, and I just hate her cream to powder shades. I think the formulation is just super bad, and I wish that the formulation that is in Fizzy, one of those ethereal thin shimmers that we had in the I Need a Nude, that this would have been more often here in the palette because this is the only shade that has this formulation. Another thing I want to mention is that I think that these four mattes here are very redundant. I don't think that we needed all of them. Maybe just give us, um, I don't know, give us Teak and Flash and then Sandstone and Aria could have been a tad more deeper so that we do not have to rely on the shade Log to deepen every single look. But because when you add Log to every single look, the vibe that you get will always be the same. So at this point, I think with the Natasha Denona releases in general, she has given us a lot of monochromatic palettes, aside maybe from Retro Glam last year, a lot of monochromatic palettes with not a lot of variation in the color story so that we can build our own palettes. I actually just um, asked on Instagram if any one of our followers has an empty midi palette from Natasha Denona because if I have an empty midi palette, I can like build little palettes. I don't want to mix and match in between the palettes that I have. I much rather take some shadows out, place them in a custom palette and then put them back in because my brain would start to fire if in this palette would be other shades maybe in the pan of Aria. No, no way. And the palette that I get, I will um, remove the names underneath the pans because mm -mm, no, I can't. I, I truly cannot. I have to admit, overall, I like this palette more than I initially thought I will. But I also have to admit and just be true and honest with myself that this is not a palette I will grab. You know, this is not a palette that when I sit here in the morning, I don't know, it's like 5.30 a.m. on a Monday, and I'm sitting here and being like, oh, what palette am I going to use? My first thought will not be, oh, let's use Natasha Denona Gone. 
It would much rather be, let's use Natasha Denona Xenon, but you can mix them. So this is also cool. I was kind of thinking of maybe adding a base. If you have been here for longer in some of my uh, look videos, I, for example, take the Black Loon base from Raban. This is a black eyeshadow, cream eyeshadow with a little bit of sparkles in them. And that one as a base and then the looks on top Oh, superb. The question is now, are you targeted audience or not? How to find out? Honestly, if the I Need a Nude palette from Natasha Denona was too pinkish for you and too neutral cool tone for you, while I don't think that I Need a Nude is very much cool tone, but it is cooler than a lot of her other palettes, and you think that bronze palette is a bit too warm, too much, too fiery, and you want to have something right in the middle, the golden palette is the way to go. I personally do not have the OG gold palette, so I cannot tell you if there is any difference in formulations. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other YouTubers out there who have the OG gold and can make this comparison for you. So was this palette worth investing? Actually, yes, I'm happy with it. I like it more than I thought. Will I now grab it the next day and do a Monday morning look? Absolutely not, because I do have some other palettes to test, but also if I didn't have other palettes to test, it would just not be that palette that I gravitate naturally to. If I though had to choose every day to use a Natasha Denona palette, the golden would be uh, somewhat around the top three actually. So how do you feel about this palette? Did you pick this up? If you plan still to pick this up, make sure you use a discount code so you can save some money. If you want to support me, you can use my code Ella Kinkley. That will save you 15% if you order from the Natasha Denona website. So thank you so, so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe because I have fun videos to come. I've done fun videos already. Comment, and if you don't know what to comment, um, comment golden. Thank you, and I hope I can see you in the next one.